What's up, everybody? It's the Waiting for Next Year.com podcast. Monday morning, I was on Dogs on the Run with Andy Baskin, Mike Cairns, Pierre Woods uh, on Channel 5, and here is what you missed if you weren't listening. <laughs> Come on, man. You're a diehard Browns fan. You're really going to say that? That's a low Keep blow. Going. I mean, I'm. I'm the the wagons. Rounds, and I'm trying, but that's a low blow. Next thing you're gonna say you're rooting for Michigan. Oh, so did I say that Pierre was on the set. Sorry. Did you say oh, you're like, rooting for Oh my Michigan? god, go jump in a fucking fire. You suck. <laughs> hey no. <laughs> you, you better root for Michigan, man. We on a we on a rise, believe that. Yeah, not for like the next Power five years. Football, buddy. You're not gonna beat the Ohio State University. Listen, Edinburgh ain't beat nobody. <laughs> So uh, you go ride off somewhere. We're like Division Two, II, Division Three. Why are you picking on us? I ain't picking on you. You got enough to worry about in the Big Ten. You started. You and Andy started this, man. So guess what? I I, just, I can I finish just brought it. it up. I was. I had nothing. Yeah, to I will drive the two and a half hours. I will. When Edinburgh this win the game, come and talk to me. I may go me. down, but you're gonna wake up tomorrow. You just won thirty-one zero <laughs> against a ranked team. I believe Edinburgh's in the same conference as Appalachian State, State right? So oh, wait, what? No, I wasn't no, there when no. they played. We're like in the we're like in the PSAC West. You're in the you're in the what? PSAC? The PSAC West. <laughs> yeah, it's you know the that Pennsylvania State. State do, do you realize conference. that you just called your conference the PSAC West? Yeah, so know. there's an East on top of that, right? Huh? So there's an East then too. Yeah, there's an East and a West, and it's the PSAC. <laughs> it's the PSAC. P S A C. PSAC. 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 Okay. It's not yep. embarrassing? You, the you can't come up with a better name than that? No, I, I, I didn't I'll do pee, it. I got a sack, and <laughs> there it is. I thought you had to pee. Yeah, That's I mean, how that you say. Uh, All right. Tell me, uh, who are you starting a quarterback next week? Uh, you got to go with Johnny. Why Why play McCown? I mean, we're going to have the number one and number two draft pick overall. So you need to know if you need to pick a QB or if you need to go wide receiver. Is the season over? Or are you telling me season's it's over? over? It is. It's over. I, oh, I predict a four and twelve, and I doubt they're going to get that many. We'll be lucky if we win two. All right, uh, do me a favor, cover your pee sack. I don't want you to get hurt there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey, don't forget you can catch my show at nine a.m. <laughs> through EdinburghNow.com. We'll be breaking down the morning the pee after. sack. Yep, we cover all the action in the pee sack. Does it sting when Edinburgh loses in the pee sack? Yeah, it's kind of like room for the Browns. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay. Take some penicillin and take care of it. Thanks, Tubby. I did. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. All right. There we go. We See you, George. Uh, let's go to Skype one real quick. Craig Lindell is hanging out from Waiting for Next Year. Hi, Craig. How are you? Good morning, guys. The the guy from uh, who roots for the pee sack who goes by the name Tubby is making fun of Pierre Woods. That's That's phenomenal. <laughs> very nice start. Very nice start for you. Uh, Craig, give us, a, give us your thoughts on yesterday's game. Um, I think it all starts with head coach Mike Pettin, and I, I tried to start sure. all that criticism on waiting for next year, and sure. people confuse the idea of criticizing the head coach with wanting him to be fired automatically because that's pretty much what we're used to in Cleveland. Um, that's not really what I'm what I'm going for here, but he has to stand responsible for how this team came out yesterday they they looked like they didn't even um they did they weren't ready to start the game the game plan wasn't executed at all from the beginning um and and the things that this team is supposed to be good at that it's designed to be good at they're not good at uh the the fact that people want to talk about the run defense and i think that's a big problem but the the lack of pressure on a quarterback like Derek carr is totally inexcusable I got a question for you. Just before we get back into the Browns, can we drop his name, CG, for a second? And if you're listening, did you go out and buy one of those real high-end microphones at the Apple Store? No, I've had that one for a long time. That's my instrument mic. Oh, that's what you're – so, I mean, that is a legit microphone, Oh, it's totally it? legit. Uh, the whole room's legit. No, no, I mean – well, I'm uh, – Right, now you don't remember the hit song you played on our show two years ago? No, Where are you, Michael the Lombardi? The hit song you played on our, on our show the other day, but I'm just looking at the microphone. The microphone that you're actually using on your computer – Oh yeah, yeah. No, I've had this one too. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a legit <laughs> broadcasting microphone. Yeah, I'm, I'm really it really sounds impressed. good. It, it looks sounds great. It's better than the mic. Trick, trick, trick. Might be better than the mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How do we figure? First, uh, let's go this direction. 
Is the season over, as Tubby would tell you? Uh, I mean, <laughs> define define the season and defined over because, uh, I mean, certainly um, the Browns were loosely involved in playoff talk last year for quite a while. I mean, the, the playoff picture graphics on ESPN hadn't excluded the Browns completely and totally. Um, but there, I don't think that will happen this year. I think those graphics will skip the Browns all year long, if that's what you mean by over. Um, but I, I still think that this team has some decent pieces they've they've got uh, a a decent overall team they lack stars they've got no one superstar that seems to play up and above beyond you know what what we expect them to play and that's the that's the really frustrating thing there's not a superstar pass rusher there's not a superstar offensive player we don't even get to sit back and dream that Josh Gordon might come back this year i mean people forget we had that dream a year ago and that, and that was legit um, even though we know how it all turned out, there's no there's no player like that on the horizon with this team, and there's nobody on the roster, sure. even with Travis Benjamin showing us his first two weeks uh, how he could get over the top. There's nobody on this team that you're gonna you're gonna kind of point to at the end of the year and say, "Yep, that's our that's sure. our franchise superstar caliber sure. player." All right, Craig, I'm gonna play this game with you and Kenny and everybody on the set. You're Ray Farmer. You're watching yesterday's game. You're watching Khalil Mack. You're watching Derek Carr. You're watching Amari Cooper drive your team into the ground. What's going through your mind, and should you be looking for another job? Go ahead, Craig. You take it first. I'm going to go to Kenny next. I, I don't think uh, I don't think Ray Farmer. I think maybe Ray Farmer should be looking for another job, but I don't think he will be um, because I think that uh, for once. In the, in the history of the Browns since 1999, somebody's going to give these guys five years just to, to, to take their lumps and learn from their mistakes. And maybe I'm naive, but it seems to me that uh, Jimmy Haslam might have finally learned that he can't just fire everybody. Uh, Kenny, are they on a five-year plan? I don't think Ray Farmer's on a five-year plan. Mike Pett might be on a five-year plan. I don't think Ray Farmer. I was just, uh, hey, guys. Check this out. The, the Ray Farmer doesn't think wide receivers matter in the National Football League, right? Julio Jones, 12 receptions, 164 yards, two touchdowns yesterday. A.J. Green, 10 receptions, 227 yards, two touchdowns yesterday. Mari Cooper, eight catches, 134 yards against the Browns yesterday. Sammy Watkins, the only one. He only had one catch for 39 yards. This is a league now that is built on offense not around defense. You need to score points to win games. Wide receivers, the rules benefit the wide receivers. Uh, the league wants to see scoring. They want excitement. They don't want the old pound, uh, you know, ground and pound football. They want wide receivers to star in this league. And Ray Farmer refuses to go out and draft a wide receiver high in the draft or sign a big-name free agent. Ray Farmer, Dwayne Bowe, Brian Hartline had a decent game, but he's a three at best on any other team. Uh, Ray Farmer will be looking for work at the end of this year. Uh, do you agree with that, Mike? Yeah, I, I think I, I think that Ray Farmer won't be with this team next year. I don't think he makes it uh, after this year's over. I think that's I think he's one and done. And then Mike, Mike Pett may be on the five-year plan. I think it's more like three or four, you know, the option for the fifth year. But when it comes to the wide receivers, Ray Farmer pointed it out. He said he would never take a wide receiver in the first round, which I, it just boggles my mind. Why would you not take the best football player that's available to your team that could be a game changer? I'm, and this could be any wide receiver. You can go back to last year's wide receiving class. It didn't sniff at him. He had four top wide receivers in that first ten picks. And he continued to say, oh, I don't, I don't, we, don't take, we don't draft wide receivers. I got a question, though. It still boggles my mind. Go ahead, Craig. So if uh, if Justin Gilbert was actually a lockdown corner, would we be having this conversation about the wide receivers? Is this really about the position group or the fact that he's whiffed on a guy like Justin Gilbert? Well, Not just me, Justin Gilbert, though. Let me give you the $9 million reason why he's going to be looking for a job. There it is. Dwayne Bowe was a healthy scratch yesterday, guys. Healthy Ooh. scratch. Ooh. Yeah. Or, or, that's, or how about this one? That's hanging over Ray's head like a noose. I, I saw him in the fourth and I'm not trying to be in the off in the off season. The Jets uh, traded a fifth round pick for Brandon, Brandon Marshall. Marshall. Yeah, and yep. the Browns drafted Vince Maley in the fourth round, who is not on our team anymore. I, so I don't know. If you're Jimmy reason. Haslam and you're talking to payroll and you're like, "Hey, uh, did we cut those checks this week? Ooh, how much did we give Dwayne Bowe to be a healthy scratch? How I, does that happen? I think Ray has a little problem from when he was in Kansas City. They drafted a receiver, I believe. Ego. Um, from either Missouri or either 
uh, Pittsburgh, and the guy didn't, uh, he didn't pan out. Right. Then they traded him from Kansas City and took the guy that San Francisco had, and they both, they swapped the first-round receivers, and they, they both flopped. I mean, I don't think they're in the lead anymore right now. So I don't know if that's his reasons, but I know one thing, uh, he needs to get out of here. Is is Dwayne Bow the reason he's in the hot, in hot water? Just real quick, because I want to. Oh yeah, Dwayne Bow. Yes, it doesn't matter all, the draft picks you can kind of live with. The Dwayne Bow thing puts him puts him in hot water. Why should why can you live with the draft picks? Why why should you live with the draft picks when over the last two years it's been the deepest uh, two years of wide receiver drafts oh, oh, in I, I, listen, rounds I'm, one through five, and you still didn't come away with any of them. I, I'm Not with one. you on that, Kenny. Look, so I totally agree with you, yeah. but I think that you can kind of back off on a draft pick for just a second, saying. These guys are young. I'll give a guy three years if I'm going to draft him that high. I mean, Johnny looks like a, a – a, a, Johnny looked good last week, but still I think people were hoping for maybe a little bit more. I still want to hold back on Johnny, I, I, and I'm willing to do that based on the fact that he was willing to go into rehab, and I saw him with a little bit of magic last week. But Justin Gilbert and Dwayne Bowe have got to be a thorn or a hemorrhoid for Jimmy Haslam when he thinks about that. I mean, there's just no question. Craig, your thoughts on that? So uh, I'm just asking the question, and, and sure. I'm sure uh, everybody will jump in and say, yeah, no, he can't. But can can Ray Farmer get better? I mean, is, he's a guy who was in demand. Everybody wanted him to be their general manager a year ago is what it seemed like. And I, I'm i with you on the record. I, I agree on everything that everybody's saying in terms of criticism. It's the conclusion. I mean, it, it, are the Browns better off by not sticking it together, keeping their scouting staff together, and trying to improve on the process, or do they just need to fire everybody? Well, I think here's part of the problem. The part of the problem, this all starts with Joe Banner. Joe, you go back to Joe Banner, and he brings in Mike Lombardi. I don't care what you think about Mike Lombardi. That whole thing was a mess. They should have just made Lombardi the general manager out of the gate. Then suddenly, mythically, they decided they want to bring Ray Farmer from player personnel into here. Well, the only way they could do that was to make him the assistant general manager. So now you've got all these problems. These, I think all these problems stem from the fact that Joe Banner, the businessman, was a good businessman. But in football terms, I just don't know if he made a lot of good moves. And one of those good moves was bringing uh, both Lombardi and Farmer here at the same time. Those guys were like oil and water. They, they didn't want to be in the same room. And I think that what happened was when they went through the coaching search and they decided they ended up with Mike Patton, Jimmy Haslam hated the fact that he was getting turned down left and right. So Jimmy watched this whole process play out. And then he saw Mike and he saw Joe kind of not on the same page. And he said, you know what? Joe wasn't mine. The league gave me him. I'm going to cut my losses with that. Take your buddy Lombardi with you. And then all of a sudden, Ray had an interview in Miami. Would he have got the job? People are saying maybe. Maybe he would have got the job. I didn't hear anybody other than Miami say they wanted Ray Farmer to be his general manager. This mess <laughs> starts from the day the league said to Jimmy Haslam, Joe Banner's your guy. Now, from a business standpoint, love Joe. I think Joe, smart guy from not a from, talent evaluator. The, but when it came to football, and we used to ask Joe that, Joe, are you a football guy? And it, oh, well, I never give us an answer. That's oh. where the problem started with this whole thing. You want to chime in? No, I, no, I agree. I, I, he's a great. He was not a talent evaluator. He was all the business side of football, and that was one of the things they thought it would clean up. But when it comes to building a football team, yeah, you're right. It did start there with Joe Banner, and I don't think. Uh, uh, Ray Farmer is any better at building a football team until you get somebody that actually has a vision that's not a one-year vision or a day-to-day -day vision it's actually like a three-year plan like here's what we're going to do we need to start now I don't see that with this team well we can't break the regime up right now we do that then the guys are going to feel like well man they they keep firing these guys bring these guys in fire bring them they're leaving guys. anyways no Pierre problem. the free agents are getting the hell out of here they don't well, care they're gone you know what Dwayne Bow's still here for nine million reasons so, I mean, if they know they can come here and get pages like they used to do in Buffalo, um, that's what they're going to do. And yeah, but you're going to get guys on the back nine of their career just looking for a paycheck. That's all. Well, you're not going to get any uh, that, you know, players be. that actually and contribute they, to this. They, and think about this. The Browns right. are the only organization that hire people for the wrong jobs. Mike Holmgren was hired. Oh. Should have been the head oh, coach. He was, he was the general manager. He failed at that in Seattle, and he came here and failed miserably. Joe Banner, good paid. point, Andy, there. Uh, he's a business guy, not a football guy. They hire him to do the wrong jobs. Starts at the top with Jimmy Haslam, guys. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting story. We heard this last night. And then, Craig, I'll, I'm going to uh, let you go here in a second. I just want to find out what's going on. But we heard an interesting story uh, in the last 24 hours. Mike and I were sitting, talking around. And that, the, and Kenny asked me, because I, I, maybe I just wasn't around at this point.
But there was a point where Ozzie Newsom had thought about coming back to the Browns, and he wanted 10% of the team in total control. If you could go back and tell Randy Lerner to do that now, how happy would we all be? Very happy. Well, that'd be a no-brainer. You'd do yeah. that in a heartbeat if, indeed, that was 100% accurate. Don't know if it was, but absolutely. Ozzie is in the Hall of Fame as a tight end. He could get inducted again or added to his plaque as one of the best general managers in recent history. Yeah. Would have been interesting. All right, Craig, oh, yeah. let's go back to you. Just uh, touch on any of the thoughts we just had just now, and then I want to find out what's going on with waiting for next year. Craig. Well, I'd, I'd give uh, Ozzy 30% to come over now at this point. The way, And I, I want them to keep it together. Um, and waiting for next year, we're obviously talking about yesterday's Browns game, unfortunately. And uh, my column is up there about how this rests on Mike Pettin and uh, – you know, obviously he doesn't catch passes or make tackles, but it's still his responsibility how badly the team came out yesterday. That's not me asking for him to be fired, but uh, he's got to own this one, and I expect him to. And, uh, boy, this team is going to be its going to be a, a tough go. They could very well come back to Cleveland 1-4 and four with Denver across the sidelines. All right, Craig, thank you very much. We'll go to waiting for next year. We always appreciate the conversation and uh, love that microphone. I might have to borrow that for you at some point. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Nice job. Craig. I think it's tough when you got to follow up PSAC. I think that's a tough spot Craig's to be. Craig's the man, though. Hey, Craig, 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 Craig PSAC. Good job. <laughs> Can you believe that is actually the name of a cop? I, can't, I don't think he got where we were going, so, though. Yeah, no, uh, you, you broke it down. We slowed it down. And it's Hubby still, couldn't get it? Oh, it's early, but it something. didn't register. He didn't understand. All right, uh, Eric, the referee, Craig. let's uh, take care of business on this show with no rules. What, what do we got going on here, and where do we need to go, and what are we getting to? Uh, you're going to give me a minute, and I'm going to uh, queue up some of our Steelers and Ravens uh, reporters. All right, so we'll talk Steelers and Ravens here. In- 